The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of our Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started for PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway, roll the video. Ever since I was little, I have had a big love for modeling. I liked it even before I knew what it was called. I just love seeing pictures of people with cool outfits and makeup looks. And I loved when television series and movies would have a fashion show sequence. And that is part of the reason back then that Ampu was my favorite character on Ojamo Jo Doremi, partly because she was a model along with everything else that she did. She was something that I really wanted to be. Modeling is something that catches my interest and I do consider myself to be a model regardless of what anyone says. I have done things before, don't play with me. But while modeling is something that catches my interest, I've been wanting to read more books about it as it's been one of my 2023 goals to read more. As I look for books to read about models, I stumbled upon this one book. This has to be one of the worst books I have read in a while. I have not disliked the book this much since I was forced to read The Canterbury Tales when I was 17. Okay, so I feel like the general public knows who Naomi Campbell is, but for those of you who don't know, she is one of the most successful black supermodels. She was the first black woman on the cover of French Vogue and Time Magazine. And I love this because she's dark skinned and usually when it comes to like the first black anything with women, the women are usually light skinned or biracial. She was so big that she was in Michael Jackson's music video. That's how popular she was. But as she is one of the most successful black models, she's also the fashion industry's token. Let's just keep it a buck. I try to keep my opinions at a minimum now when it comes to celebrities because we don't know these people and I also don't want so much of my platform to be focused on celebrity culture anymore. But Naomi is, Campbell is a person I always knew to be very problematic because when I first learned who she was, it was because Oprah had collected her on how she treats people of lower working positions. And I still have little to no care for people who disrespect service workers. Like what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Aside from that, I think she's a wonderful model, but for other things, not so much. When it comes to modeling, she is top tier. Everything else is mid to a certain extent, but overall, I do appreciate her work ethic, but that's pretty much it. I'm not about to kiss ass because she has just done too much for me to excuse. How I feel about Naomi Campbell is similar to how I feel about Doja Cat, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. For the most part, all you need to know before I go into the review section of this book is that Swan is a book about a very unlikable model in my opinion and she is basically wanting to retire at the age of 26 and she is looking for someone to take her place. That's pretty much the only thing you need to know about this book because uh -huh. let's go on with the review. I present you guys the book review of Naomi Campbell Swan. Can I even really call it Naomi Campbell Swan? Because guess what? Here's the first red flag with this book and why it ended up being so freaking trash. It's because she didn't write it. And because I want to be here on this authentic as possible when it comes to this book review. I literally have my list of notes I took as I was reading this on the archive and whew, where do we even begin? So I'm just gonna go by bullet point by bullet point by bullet point and explain why I said what I said. I said one, you can tell that it's written in the 90s because this book expresses way too much misogyny, racism, homophobia, transphobia and also fat phobia and i'm just gonna be completely honest i expected fat phobia low-key from a book about models i expected it but even though it was still there it was still disgusting and i still hated it 
But two, you can also tell that a white woman wrote this book because of the way non-whiteness is portrayed and spoke about and vice versa compared to anybody that is a person of color. And three, like I said earlier, you can tell that Naomi Campbell did not read this. She did not write this, but you can tell she absolutely didn't read it either or barely read it. Like, I'm sorry to all her fans in the 90s that went out and bought this book simply because they liked her. Y'all deserve a better book. <laughs> But before we get into the social aspect problem relating to this book, it's a lot. Let's actually talk about the problems with it from a writing point of view. The writing point of views for this book were very confusing. And mind you, one thing that I was always taught is that your book needs to be written in one point of view. Like, you know, third person omniscient, third person narrative, or first person narrative. And I couldn't tell because sometimes this fucking book was in first person but then sometimes it was in third person and I couldn't tell if it was third person limited or third person omniscient. It was confusing and I, I couldn't stand it. But another thing with the way that it was written, this book felt like middle grade, like the writing style of it was a bit middle grade but for an adult audience if that makes sense because this book's writing is very juvenile i would say like the language is reminding me of books that i read when i was in middle school but the subject matter was like very mature like i say like those blueford high books that i absolutely can't stand we can talk about blueford high another day at another time but because of the writing style and the subject matter of this book it kind of caused it to clash a little bit and the book changing its point of view so often is what contributed to that because mind you it's not necessarily bad in my opinion to have a story told from multiple perspectives but that's the main issue because you're reading like two paragraphs in before you can figure out which model that the story is focusing on because i will give an example from the book called wonder i i read this book like in in like early high school i'm trying to remember what it is but anytime that the story changed point of view it began at the beginning of the chapter where they had the name of the said character whose point of view it was from this book did not give us that <laughs> but also what's the story what exactly is going on here because i can't fucking tell this is a problem that i had with another book called the other black girl and i really tried to keep my opinions about that book to a minimum mainly because i didn't want it to come across as me shitting on another black woman's work because it's just that book needed work because it was like the book was just going on and on and on and on but nothing was happening and how I felt with the other black girl being like that is how I felt with Swan. It was just so much shit going on, but nothing was happening. But also at the same time, I understand books where it's just kind of like vibes going on and people just conversating and whatnot. But it was nothing going on, but also a bit dull. And then they threw shit in there for shock value, which we will come back to put a pin on that. This book kept bouncing all over the place and I legit could not process who was who and what was going on because one minute we was in london one minute we, we was in mulan milan not mulan milan as in italy next we was in miami next we was in new york and the next thing you know we was in paris next thing you know we went back to fucking london i'm like okay mm -hmm. and then also on top of the fact that the story kept bouncing around all over the place it was getting really difficult to tell which model was in which location so uh, all right <laughs> And mind you, I have no problem with stories moving around in different cities, but they made it much more confusing because they didn't establish which character was in what city at one time. They did, but the names were rarely brought up and spread out and whatever. And this is just probably like a personal thing for me, but I'm like, it's a lot easier to tell which character is which if the names are brought up a little bit more often especially if you have a lot of characters because this book has a lot of people in it but then also i mentioned something about the fact that this story relied heavily on shock value in between all of this because it's like oh my gosh this is so dull oh my freaking gosh this is so boring and then next thing you know somebody over here getting i'm like huh but overall, if I had one word to describe this book overall, it would be ignorant. This book is so freaking ignorant because 
it one it literally feeds into this stereotype that models are stupid and i hate how people think that any woman whose job has to do with her appearance is that she's stupid and i noticed that this isn't even just a woman thing it's a gender neutral thing just as well because a lot of like male models and actors and whatnot oftentimes they're um intelligence is like questioned because they're good looking and mind you this is like a discussion that I feel like is very much nuanced because I know we get on here all the time and talk about the subject of pretty privilege and this and that and the third but also there is this connotation that people have that if you are pretty that you are not smart or if you're good looking and your job has a lot to do with your appearance that you're not bright and this book portrays these models to be so freaking ditzy like they're all kind of airheads to a certain extent and it's sad because it leads to them being like taken advantage of and mind you you do not have to be ditzy or you know an airhead to be taken advantage of there are very smart people i hear that get taken advantage of but here it just frustrates me for the most part because i don't know if anybody can relate to this but i remember back when i was younger teachers would literally be getting mad at us for like being in the bathroom and like fixing up our hair and like fixing up our lip gloss or whatever or like in class like filing our nails or whatnot and they were like y'all spending too much time trying to focus on your looks you need to be focused on that book right there in front of you you need to be focused on your work this is not no i used to hate when they'd be like that. they'd be like this is not the salon y'all do not come to school to look like this like i'm telling y'all some teachers really be haters like some teachers really do be haters and that is like the kind of energy that i was getting from here because i'm just like they associate like beauty with stupidity and i think that is so freaking negative because i remember that entire not like other girls era where a lot of girls was over here talking about oh i don't wear makeup because i'm focused on doing more important things and i'm like girl you can be studying you can go to school with makeup on it's okay and mind you this is coming from somebody that barely wears makeup if you want to wear makeup cool with you I wear makeup sometimes but the main reason I just don't wear it is because like I just don't be in the mood to remove it. I be low-key lazy sometimes when it comes to makeup. You just see why I'm breaking out bad on my face right now. That's because because I did a makeup look and I did not take my makeup off properly and I broke out afterwards. So yeah, that's just something that I personally need to work on. But simply just because I don't wear makeup doesn't mean that I am against people wearing makeup, period. Because a lot of so much of the things that I look at, they be like cute little makeup looks. And I like to draw makeup looks when I'm drawing. So that's just something I wanted to put out there. Overall, beauty does not equal stupidity. That's just something I wish people would say. As I said, this book is very ignorant. The biracial slur is said, and if you don't know what biracial slur is, go look up the rapper named Lotto. <laughs> and then at one point, this book really just pisses me off because long story short, it just says black models don't wanna work like saying that black women don't want to work as models and mind you that this book was published in the fucking 90s and it was much much harder in the past for models in general to get work back then because the internet wasn't necessarily a thing like it is now where so much of the castings and whatnot are done through the internet where back then you had to go out of your way to find specific agencies and then it wasn't all that easy to find these locations or you got scouted off the side of the road or whatever a lot of people were talking about they have gotten scouted at malls before and whatnot but it just pissed me off because it brushed it off as like black women don't want to be models and that's not a smart thing to say because it's the 90s and so much of entertainment was just now starting to get black like having like more all black shows like Moesha and Hanging with Mr. Cooper but also white models were still getting picked over black models often like let's be fucking for real and three like the main black models that were named in this book were kind of like the only models that we were really seeing because they are the industry's tokens to a certain extent by like literally when you think of like the top black fashion models you think Naomi Campbell you think 
Tyra Banks and you think Amon but when you actually look at a lot of 90s like 90s like model pictures and whatnot you see the same women in rotation you see the same people the entire time they was not out here trying to pick new black people so don't get out here and fucking say that black models don't want to work because they do y'all just made it much harder for them to break into it so yeah not not a great thing to say another thing that got on my nerves where it was like some xenophobia here just as well um there's this one latino woman who dead ass is just a spicy latino trope and the book does make fun of her heritage and one thing i can't stand is that they specifically made fun of the food that she was eating because she was cuban specifically and it was just weird that i didn't like that but it's not even just like a problem with the that woman written to be like the spicy latino trope the black women within this story were very heavily stereotypically written just as well not a good look but on top of the fact that like this book is very much ignorant um this book so desperately at times wants to be on commentary on how blackness is viewed within the fashion industry and the reason it sucks is because it's coming from a white perspective that doesn't understand what it's like to be a black feminine presenting person because i think i forgot to mention it but the ghostwriter for this book was a white woman that was the first issue right there but it's bad enough that we can barely tell you what's going on with this story but right when it starts to tackle social issues it shifts away quickly and it's annoying because this book wants to talk about race but it fails flat because it talks about like race while being racist and very xenophobic i was not here for it the ghost writer did not see black and non-white people outside of their race because anytime something was brought up with a lot of the characters of color specifically female characters of color they it, it was always an emphasis on their race or it was like heavily stereotypical so that was another problem uh everything with the non-white characters was just about them being not white and that is another problem that a lot of white writers have they don't seem to know how to write black characters outside of them being black and the reason why this was so frustrating is because while this book was very dull to a certain extent the white women in this story were allowed to have much more range and while yes the subject of race plays a lot into non-white stories most of the storytelling with the non-white characters is the fact that they were just not white women working in this industry that's literally so much of what their story revolved around which yes i understand to a certain extent but it's not right because it didn't come from a black person y'all see the main issue that's the reason why it was so weird but also so much of what was said it was very alarming and disgusting in this book like i legit i don't even know where to begin because i was like this book was trying to be political and it was trying to be like a social commentary on the modeling world but i was like how are you going to do that when you're going to be extremely homophobic and then you're also going to be transphobic because there was a really disgusting comment in this book made about hillary clinton Lindy J longed to stumble on the Prince of Wales in a gay bar to uncover evidence that Hillary Clinton had been born a man to learn that the wholesome toothy boy who had grown up next door to her in the other half of the Ashton other Lynn Sam Detach had grown up to the bigger serial killer than Dennis Mills and had thoughtfully operated half of Kentucky as well as she sold the story in New York and had been invited to the contributor editor on Vanity Fair. And they were trying to say that she was a different gender than what she was. And I was just like, this is absolutely disgusting. Like, I, no, once, like, I was getting frustrated with all, like, the racially insensitive shit and the fat phobic stuff. Like, I kind of expect, like I said, I expected the fat phobia going into this book because it is a book by a model. And, but that homophobia and transphobia, that is the moment where I realized the book was just going to get much more problematic the more it went on and it did if they wanted this story to focus on race and the entertainment industry in general and not just the modeling industry then the ghostwriter should have been black a black woman or black femme specifically because it's so obvious that the disconnect is there with this story 
but to be honest i'm just gonna go ahead and say that naomi campbell probably didn't even care because she ain't read this shit she made it very clear that she didn't read it but anyway anyway she probably don't care about all the other bigot shit that was in this book that took up so much space and contributed nothing like y'all i'm not even trying to be funny when i say this but this book came out in the 90s and she probably still has not read that shit to this day like at least in full and also speaking of Naomi, this book is constantly talking about her, like bragging on her. Like, first of all, it's supposed, it's supposed to be over here like she wrote this book. There's so many self-insert moments where the ghostwriter just like put in points in here bragging about Naomi Campbell and who she is as a model and why she's so fucking great. And I'm just like, I understand the vanity. I understand because like I said, Naomi Campbell is an important figure to black history three but i was just like you did not read this <laughs> but also it's like kind of frustrating because i'm like what is this contributing do you just want to brag about yourself but also on top of the fact that this book was just constantly bragging about like naomi campbell who she was as a person it was also shit talking like other models within the industry like throwing in like sidebar comments and whatnot like i'm not trying to like make assumptions or nothing but i low-key felt like so much of the rude ass shit that was said about all the other fictional models within this book was just them like talking about other models that were working in this industry but overall this book was just kind of like a bunch of nothing i say it really was a bunch of nothing it's just women being brutalized the entire time but it just feels empty and i'm personally gonna take this section right here and read you guys some of the shit that was in this book and you'll most likely be able to see where i'm coming from so Get ready. Molly Brambridge was from Liverpool. She was 20 years old and she was not. She told me five minutes after she arrived a nanny. She was a model. Nannying was something she did to get a roof over her head. I suppose I had said something like fine by me. All I can remember is I was too busy gawking at her to really take in what she said. I never seen anything like her. She was incredibly tall with very long legs and tight black leggings and huge tits. I could see her nipples through her t-shirt. Looking back on it I realized she must have been incredibly vulgar. She always wore far too much makeup and kept going on about how she had to be prepared in case an agency called up and sent her on a casting they never did it was some speech and as far removed from the superficial fashion world as it could possibly be as you may have noticed only one black girl had been shortlisted in the competition and i want to know why why is there always one if that why not several? Naomi Campbell was the first black model of the cover of Time in French Vogue, and this is in the 1990s. Veronica Webb was the first black model to endorse cosmetic of Revlon, but she is being paid the same amount of money as white models. My guess is that nobody is pushing hard enough for a black model. They ought to be as twice as many of them out there. The work's there. Why don't they give it to the black girl? Tell me that. We have a beautiful black girl here tonight, but nothing like Amon. She's nothing like Naomi. She's nothing like Ty Banks. They're beautiful, but so is she in her own way. Look at her. I could see the poor Amy Lamere, a uh, pretty shaken by the sudden intrusion. She slight, she trembled slightly, not quite sure to say whether she slipped backstage. I wonder if she knew who the woman was. A journalist, a black activist, whoever she was was only speaking the truth, and I was pleased by Charlie and allowing it to be heard. There are jobs waiting for this beautiful girl and the hundred of other black girls and Asian girls. Don't forget the Asian girls. Where are the Asian models? There's Yasmin Garu. I mispronounced that so bad, my apologies. But she's mixed race. Her mother is Canadian. The more the world sees pure black and ethnic girls coming up, the less of an issue it will be. The color outside is just a shell. Everyone's individual is what on the inside that really counts. Okay, just to let you guys know, there is a bit of anti-Semitism within this book too. Ew. Cassie Zimmerman met the man of her dreams when he had thrown at her feet at the California surf. She had been watching him for some time, wondering what such an unbelievable jerk he thought he was trying to compete in the surfers at Alice Beach. He clearly never surfed in his life, yet chosen a particularly dangerous spot to start. Cassie needed distraction. For the first 16 years of her life, nothing but bad happened to her. Now suddenly her whole life had fallen apart. She was a California girl with almost white blonde hair, violet eyes, and a cute little turn of nose, a Nordic beauty courtesy of her mother's Scandinavian ancestors. She appeared to have none of the Jewish blood of her father 
Al Zimmerson, an entertainment lawyer in the client list of a serious Beverly Hills TV agent. She had been raised as an only child in Beverly Hills mansion along with the top of Benedict Canyon with a Filipino maid waiting on her hand and foot. She was classmates at the Beverly Hills Pie compete with one another for invitations to her home because she not only did have the biggest pool, but she was also the only one to have her own private screening room at her disposal. Her life appeared to be perfect it so had been except for one nasty blip I have my very own Prince Charming. His name is Marcus and he is called after Marcus Garvey, a Jamaican and black leader in America who urged all blacks to consider Africa their real home. He died in 1940. My Marcus wears his hair in funky dreads that doesn't make him a rasta. His early brother went to school with Jazzy B when they lived in North London and passed on a lot of stuff to Marcus. Marcus was pretty heavy on black dignity and black pride. He called us Afro-Caribbeans. That's okay. I mean, I'm still English, but I can live with being Afro-Caribbean as well, I suppose. You are not allowed to invite male friends to the apartment. No smoking or alcohol allowed at any times. Gigi chain smoked and drank Jack Daniels and lemonade at the only friends she invited to the apartment were men. Respect your roommates. Keep the apartment clean at all times. Do not live out of your suitcase. Gigi didn't live out of her suitcase she, because she didn't own one. She lived out of five or six different carrier bags which she had brought her stuff from Miami and left them littering around the room she shared with Cassie. Please do not eat others' food. You would not like it if it happened to you. Cassie took to eating food within an hour of buying it. If she left it in the fridge, Gigi helped herself. If you would like the maid to do your laundry, please put it in the laundry basket provided. Cassie dumped hers on Cassie's bed. Cassie realized she never actually hated anyone before she met Gigi. She never met anyone who put down quite so much as Gigi seemed to enjoy doing the fact that Gigi had booked several times a week and Cassie had yet to land a job and made it even worse. Cassie couldn't help noticing that Gigi had sent the condonized casting to a regular base whereas Stacy had only sent them one in the beginning. Still, she knew Stacy was there for her. Cassie called her dutifully at the agency every day to die at 4 o'clock where she had been told at orientation and Stacy was always encouraging, always told her something that happened for her to hang in there, never lose hope. Well, God knows, Barbara, you're the one who can tell. After all, you're the black agent. She hated it when they said this. She was a model agent with her own agency. She had plenty of black girls in her book and plenty of white girls. Just because herself was a woman of color, they branded her as an agent for black models only. Well, Carl, I could find you what you want. She paused after putting the boot in. But did you hear what you just said? What? You said find me a dark girl. Yes. How many white girls are you using in your show? I don't know, 34, 35 maybe? Well, why don't you want a black girl? Why don't you say I just want to find some black girls? Why does it have to be just one? Tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to send you over my very best black girls and maybe a few of my white girls too. What do you say? Oh, sure, well, Barbara, believe me. I love black girls, you know I do. I don't have anything against black girls. I used to go out with a black girl. I took her to dinner. Lovely girl. My daughter said she had black kids in her class at school. She bring them to our home. Bye, Carl. Talk to you soon. Barbara hung up. I used to go out with a black girl. I took her to dinner. Lovely girl. Please. They only ever wanted one black girl and she had many to offer. Still, four or five years ago, the average New York modern agency didn't have any black girls in their book and the bigger agencies might just have a handful among hundreds and hundreds of white girls. Still, we're improving. At least in America. In London, the line was still. Black girls really don't work over there. If they want to work, go to New York. Agencies in Europe only tend to have one black model and their trouble was there was no pressure over there to make them take more. The other problem with Europe was the collections. Barbara had difficulty getting girls of color book over seasons. Over the ment mentality seen that black girls were better for summer clothes. It was like they didn't wear clothes in winter. Barbara, Lizzie Mayhew or two. Barbara picked up Lizzie Mayhew was a casting director at an ad agency. Hey Lizzie, Barbara, how are you doing? Listen, I really like that girl of yours, Trina, with the soft drink campaign we were talking about. Lizzie, you have terrific taste. Trina was a sensational new girl of color Barbara had taken in six months ago. 100, wait, give me a minute y'all. It's 
it, this book is a mess. A thousand two hundred dollars. No, 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 no. Barbara couldn't believe what she was hearing. You know the rate is two thousand five hundred dollars not for this particular girl why well lizzie was hesitant to come out with it this is a different market well i'm sorry lizzie my girls work for two thousand five hundred if you don't agree i just don't think we can work together okay barbara okay if i give the girl two thousand five hundred please don't tell anyone she's getting more than the other black girls no problem with me said barbara i don't have anyone else this job but her who did it have to be like this? She thought Barbara. Lizzie wanted the girl to work on a campaign and didn't go right through the black community all over America. She wanted to use the image to not pay the girl money. It was such a vicious cycle. She was prepared to fight for her girls of color, but often a black girl would go to the white agency thinking he would be better for her, have more power for her. In fact, the greedy white agent would have more likely looked out for his white girls first. He was black for Christ's sake, Jordan, and he wasn't Afro. He was Haitian. He was a Korean or Chinese or Asian. He was black like Amy. Jordan winced. Sorry, Amy. That's okay, I said. Actually, it's fine with me. Elaine's attitude was perfectly healthy. Some black people she liked a lot. Some she didn't. Same as she white people she knew. But Jordan wasn't about to let that go. If he had been a white cab driver, he wouldn't just say fucking cab driver. I might say fucking cab Irish cab driver or fucking Jewish cab driver. I just like the specific Jordan. What's the problem with that? She always teased poor Jordan like this and I couldn't help giggling. Like when I first came down to meet them, she offered me a coffee and asked me how I took it and told her black and she she asked Jordan to go make Amy a coffee of color. Would you, dear? She was quite open about why she couldn't help me with the editorial work of her magazine. There's a policy, sweetheart. No black stories. They don't come out and actually say so, of course, but the words filter through somehow. See, I'm a beauty editor, not a not the beauty editor when i get to the top of things will change only if i see a black girl i like of course that's what i liked about elaine she wasn't into policies but then again she wasn't into hiring a black person unless they were what she wanted I had to send my girl to your pictures to a modeling agency called It's Wild and when they contacted me and asked me to see if I was more or less convinced it was because of Joe's pictures. I'm not a doe-eyed, mixed-race, light-skinned, pretty, pretty girl. I had really positive black face and my hair was very short. He shot me with a kind of halo of light behind me and I looked really striking. When they saw me in flesh, they wouldn't want to know. I was wrong. It was such a friendly place. I met this girl called Angie who had a sweet face. She sat me down and gave it to me straight. I'm not going to mess with you, Amy. You're not, um, there's not a lot of work for black girls, but we think you could enter the competition. The truth is we need to have a few black face in it. It's frightening how few black girls have applied. I didn't like what I was hearing. I hadn't applied because I was black. It might sound strange, but I never really encountered racism. Mom had raised us to understand that we were people first and our color came way, way behind. Still, I wasn't about to get in an argument with Angie. She was saying I could get into the composition and that's the reason I come to her see her in the first place. She explained what I have to do when I turn up for rehearsals, what was in store for me. Meanwhile, she was happy to use Joe's pictures as my test shot for the time being. They were so good. But as I said, this book is just like women being brutalized and it just feels empty overall because the story doesn't make it clear who is who often and what is going on. So it is really hard to connect with these women, I'd say. I felt like I was having a hard time having sympathy for them outside of the really horrible things happening to them. Mind you, I could understand a lot of the things that these women were dealing with in this book that we cannot say because of YouTube censors but it was just so frustrating because it was like kind of condescending it was over here acting as if oh you was in the wrong place at the wrong time that's why this happened to you you did this to yourself yada 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 and i was just like no 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 this book as i mentioned earlier in this review section is that it just painted models out into this very negative and stupid light because one thing i noticed when it comes to a lot of books about models it's like this is a cautious tale about what 
it's like to be a model and mind you i feel like there is just kind of like one specific kind of model that they are talking about and we all get the idea of just one kind of model there are so many different kinds of models out here y'all but i feel like when we read things about models it's all told from this one fucking perspective of this kind of model and basically the model that a lot of models were in the 90s and the 2000s i'm like I feel like at this point i think we need to diversify the modeling section of entertainment because there's a lot more there to work with things are different now and this book like i said this book is really dated it came out in the 90s but just because it came out back then does not excuse it today like it still was wrong back then it's just less people were talking about it and it is wrong as hell today i can see why this book was taken out of print it ain't worth it and mind you i was actually going to buy this book because i was excited to read this shit but uh, uh um i told myself to check it out on the archive first and i did and after i read like the first 30 pages i was like yeah just keep reading in here don't buy this <laughs> do not don't buy it hi everyone the captain here I just wanted to get on here real quick and tell you guys thank you so much for your support. I have gotten so much fan art from you guys and I've met plenty of y'all in person at the conventions that I have been at. And also thank you guys so much for coming to the panels that I host. It means so much to me. You guys are so great. I appreciate every little last bit of support you guys give me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can say thank you a hundred times but I truly do mean it. Thank you. So you may ask yourself, literally, why are celebrity books so terrible? And there are so many underlying reasons. The main one being that the ghostwriter is there. And I don't want to sit here and say that a lot of ghostwriters are terrible writers because I absolutely think that is false. It's seen as unethical, by the way, for someone to have a ghostwriter write for them instead of them doing it themselves. And this is why so many authors see celebrity books as soulless, because they didn't write them. It's like they were using AI to write to a certain extent. But for those celebrities that do write their books, it's still... Eh. And here is why. One, a lot of celebrities don't read. This isn't surprising because many of them are super busy all the time you can still find time to read but anyway as many of them are super busy i am someone who believes that you should be engaging with the media that you are making while i used to do extra work there was this one dude on set and mind you if you read my book you're not crucial this is one of the guys i was talking about in that book but i absolutely could not stand him he said that since he was an actor he doesn't watch movies or tv which I think is not very right in my opinion because one of my past acting teachers have told me that watching movies as an actor is important because it helps you learn. Watching movies can show you what to and what not to do. And if you're gonna write, baby, you need to read because reading helps you become a better writer. Reading other books helps you figure out what works and what doesn't work along with developing plots. 
If you're going to be writing a fantasy novel, you need to read fantasy to get familiar with the style. If you're going to be writing a crime novel, go read a damn crime novel. If you're going to be writing articles, go read other articles. A lot of celebrities that have books don't really have much of an interest in literature, but they know that people will buy it and they'll read it because their name is attached to it. And oftentimes a lot of these fans don't even read the book. They just buy it to have it like as a piece of merchandise. I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing to do, but you should be giving your supporters something that had care put into it. The main reason many of them do it is because of money. Let's be completely honest. They get a real cute check in the mail if you market your book and people purchase it. But just because these books are an extension of themselves doesn't mean they need to be half-assed. I have read quite a few celebrity books and let me tell you, there's only a few I finished and there's only a few that I enjoyed. I think what really upsets me the most when it comes to Swan is that it's very obvious that Niobe Campbell put very little care into this book. She looked gorgeous in the promo photo she took for the book. And that's pretty much it. She didn't read the shit at all. And she kind of wasted everyone's time by not reading it. But also, like I said, a lot of these celebrities just don't care. They don't care about literature. They'll just have their names left on a book. No people will buy it. And that's it. They don't even care if you read it half the time. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I told myself I wanted to be extra with this one and I did that because it's still in black and white as you guys are looking at this. I just wanted to do something different and fun and experimental because I had a really rough summer and I was like, let me, let me make a little mini movie if I want to. But that's like what I really been doing a lot more on my channel. If you guys like more experimental type videos like this, leave a comment down below. I'm genuinely curious. My regular other commentary videos will still be made, but I really do enjoy just being extra on this channel. If you guys want to know ways that you can support me outside of my channel, you can follow me on Instagram. That's where I post a lot of like my cosplay content over there. I have like three different Instagrams. The links to those will be down below. I also have a shop called HarianaHook.com com literally just named after me i have so many different things over there and i do have some new stuff coming so head on over to the site word on the street is that i have a new book coming but don't tell nobody i told y'all that um and i also have a patreon i have tiers just as little as one dollar completely optional but it really does help me out with having balance with youtube my other job school everything any little bit helps. I'm thankful for all. But if you just watch this video with the ads on, thank you, because that's great enough. Like I said, contributions from viewers like you. I will shut up. This video has gone on long enough because I love your girls playing on the background right now. But thank you guys so much for watching this video and have a good day or night. Whatever time of the day you're watching this, I'm thankful that you watched it. Goodbye. Now that you see, you should be aware of the power of three. They come to fight as fast as they can. They're dangerous, yet fabulous. Because the Utonia made them is true. They are the colors of pink, green, and blue. They'll catch you in the blink of an eye and do it all before the time. They come in through and fighting, oh. and everyone they shock in. Oh. You know, no one can stop them all because of the chemical oh. acts. They come in through and coming. Before bad times, from Townsville, Memphis, New York to LA, the Powerpuff Girls are just in the